Is it sunlight? Yeah, it's fine. Hey everybody, Mighty Man Handyman here. We're in beautiful Grand Junction, Colorado, and it is actually finally sunny today. Oh yeah. So there's been anyways. <laughs> yeah. And we're down here at my friend's uh, business, Quartz Works. That's W-O-R-K-Z. No, no, X. X, sorry. W-O-R-X. X. Yeah, it's, yeah, so, yeah, I want to say that so they know when they Google it. But we'll put a link down at the bottom or anything like that. But this is Darren over here. He's the owner. Hello. And he owns Courtworks. And if we get countertops when we're doing kitchens and bathrooms and things like this, this is the guy I like to call right here. So, in his office. Just, yeah, for, just for the expensive stuff, the quartz and the granite. Yeah. <laughs> we don't yeah. do laminate or uh, solid mm -hmm. surface or anything. Yeah, but they do that. And they do a really good job of it. And they're quick. And uh, they have good turnarounds. That's why I like to use them. So, let's, uh, we're going to step out of here because... Oh, they're unloading right now. Let's go out here. Unloading some We're slabs gonna... off of the delivery truck. Let's go watch. We're going to show you the shop here. Show you the... unloading these big old slabs. <laughs> Trying to stay out of the way. Which way is it going? I'm going this way. <laughs> Can I go right here? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's jumping into work here. <laughs> you gotta take it, take it in the shop and spray all the road drive off of it. And then uh, it out Put it out in the yard. Okay, yeah. So, how much does a slab like this typically weigh usually? Well, they're about, um, they're, they're close close to half a ton, eight, eight to nine hundred pounds usually. Wow. A, lot of, a lot of stone right there. Yeah. And you got a whole truckload coming in, huh? Yeah, we had about a half a truckload that we're unloading, that we're almost, almost done with. Yeah. 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 So, so. Right now, they're just took in the shop to spray the road grime off of it. Got dirty coming off, coming over the pass, uh, over the pass of all the snow. And then, uh, man, I'm just it out there. So there's all the new stones here. out there, guys, right there. That's all the new stuff out there. That's the in-stock selection. And I also order some stuff. And then you have remnants over here. Is this right. remnant pile? Yeah, that, yeah. They're all pieces. Either partial, partial slabs or remnants. The difference is in the price. Partial slabs are they're not. They're a little more expensive than remnants. And yeah. The partials are just partial size slabs that still match the full slabs I have over there, so they're not remnant price. They become remnant price when there's no more full slabs that match the rim. Okay, okay, that's how that works, I can interpret. Okay. If you're just looking to do a sink for your bathroom something like that, this would save you buying a whole slab. Yeah, well you any know? of my stock stuff, I don't charge the full slab. Oh, okay, that's yeah. good to know too. Right. That's good to know too. Okay, yeah. so when they wanna pick a piece out, do they come in first uh -huh. and then you bring them out here to look? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They look okay. inside this building and they come out and look at the stuff that's on the shelf. Find something they like. So, yep. Okay. Let's watch out. This one's coming back. They washed that one off. That's pretty. There it is. No road grind. That's pretty. <laughs> Can we have that one? <laughs> that, that color is called Makalu Bay. It's in my um, group two pricing group. It'd be about, it'd be around. $62 per square foot installed and everything. That's pretty. But, um, mm -hmm. And it's been a pretty popular color lately. We've been, done a lot of it for the last year or so. All right, well, let's head in here and take a look. See. Yeah, that's where it all These are the Okay. This, is a, this is a CNC saw, so it's a programmable saw. Um, the diagram you can... This is what they're making right here. Yeah, uh, this is the diagram you can see on the screen, that's the, Maybe. That's the shape. Yeah. That's the shape that's, that it's uh, starting to cut out right now. 
not a lot of the other ceramic pieces that actually have. Yeah, they know. The only one in the shop that has a saw like this one. Um, I had the only one in town that has the CNC router. That's, okay, that that's the CNC router that does the edge polishing and the sink cutouts. Um, it's finished with the pieces that are on there now, so he's getting ready to take them off. So yeah, we're the only shop in town that has a CNC router. And this is a CNC saw. And once you uh, press go, after the program's input, the slab's in place, press go, and the saw takes it from there and, and um, we'll keep cutting until you know, all those pieces are cut out. So what's the old fashioned way? A lot of hand work? Well, a regular bridge saws are, have manual controls, just like joystick controls that okay. control the, the back and forth and the front to back and up and down motion. It's all controlled manually. So somebody actually see, physically run, works yeah. it back and forth. And that's, that's, and so we this had one is high tech. And then even <laughs> more manual than that is like old hand saws and, and rails. But yeah, um, but, yeah this is... Um, so, right now it's squaring it, I guess, probably, it looks like. If I were to guess, that's what it's doing. But, um, it's starting to cut this. So this piece right here is like a... Okay. So it's, uh, yeah, it's like a wall right piece. Let's go look at the seam cutouts with the router that he has. So these these pieces are actually on there upside down. The um, those lines that you see in the front and back of the seam cutout are some rotting. We we um, cut some grooves and epoxy in some some fiberglass rods, and that reinforces the granite. So because when you cut a seam cutout, you've weakened that piece a lot. And so the rotting reinforces that granite, makes it stronger. And so these pieces have already been processed on the CNC. So after it comes off the saw, stick it on a cart, cut those rotting grooves, glue in the rotting, then put it on here. And then this will run through. These pieces, when the, when the CNC was running, these pieces, it took about two hours to do these sink cutouts and, and the edge polishing on these three pieces. That's the piece in the back there, that's half of a sink cut out. There's gonna be a seam, that's two pieces that are gonna be seen together with the other half of the sink cut out on the other piece. If you look over here, here's all the bits. Can you guys see that? And there's more over there too. So there's all your profiles and cutouts and everything. Can you guys see all the router bits? Okay. Okay. You one here. Okay. <laughs> He's gonna polish the edges for us so we can do see what one it more looks round like. on it first. Yeah. You know, really, that's not that loud as you think it would be. No, I thought know? it'd be a lot louder. Yeah. Really nice so he's point. working it up in the computer. There he goes. And then he's going to polish. Oh, look, see, it's grabbing the automatic change out. Look it's going to run through and that's the sink polishing bit, so it's going to run in here and put the last polish on that sink cut out. Okay. Can you guys see that? I'm gonna get down there closer, you really can't see. <laughs> you can see it. That's cool. It's actually pretty cool to see that. That's pretty cool to see. Yeah. 
not a lot of hands on anymore with it, huh? There's still a fair bit. There's still, there's still yeah. a fair bit of things we have to do with hand grinders and hand saws and stuff. But, uh, but by and large, this, this cuts your labor time in half, cuts your manpower in half. Uh, like I said, he's got fast turnaround, so <laughs> this is why. He does have fast turnaround. Better equipment. And he, of course, how long have you been in the shop now? This location, about two and a half years. Yeah. Prior, prior to this location, I was in Palisade for 10 years. So all this equipment is pretty new for... This, this is about a year old. We put this one in not quite a year ago. That one only, uh, like, three months ago. I bought it used, but it put it in about three, three, three months ago. Wow. This one I bought brand new. Put it in almost a year ago. Yeah. That's neat. Okay. There's one more right here. Okay. The last big piece of equipment. We're looking at one more piece of equipment. So this one right here is three months old. Or no, a year old, I think you said. And that one was three months old over there. The big tile saw. This, uh, this machine here is a, is a backsplash polishing machine. So here's a typical four inch tall piece of backsplash polished on the face with the top edge. Still just a rough cut edge. So. Um, this machine's not running right now, but we put it in, uh, put it in on this side, on the, the belt running, it feeds the, the piece through, and as it's going through the machine, a bunch of different polishing heads come up and polish that, the top edge of that backsplash, and so it'll come out the other end with, right that, with that top edge polish. Oh, Similar nice. to that, but just a standing up style for the yeah. backsplash. Yeah, yeah. Those ends standing up on edge. It comes out all nice oh. and finished, and there's your backsplash all yeah. done. So, okay. that's pretty cool. That's neat to learn all this. Mm -hmm. There's a piece right there. Yeah. I like looking at all the granite. There's lots of beautiful granite. I know. There's granite. pretty colors. Look that's at that pretty, pretty piece. Let's look at some of the products that set it off. Okay, we're going inside. Semi nice day today, actually. Yeah. Not too bad. And they are putting the slab away. I like that. I like that gray look there. That's pretty. <laughs> We're gonna go inside and talk about all the different pricing and all the different slabs you can get. There's Dustin. Hi guys. <laughs> There's Roscoe. Now I guess I should say too that you do offer some sinks to yeah, the kitchens I, and yeah. stuff. Yeah, stock, some yes. stainless steel sinks, some fire, porcelain fire clay sinks. Some black style ones um, too. So. Black quartz composite. Mm -hmm. So he does have some of those here, or you can bring your own sink oh, too. This, this part of the showroom is still under construction, not finished yet. <laughs> There's Kim. <laughs> Say hi, Kim. She's the front desk lady. <laughs> so, I've got a kitchen display here that's also kind of a working counter. Let, I'll first show you what. Uh, so, here's where um, here's where the programming takes place. So, Jesse's our templator, digital <laughs> templator, and programmer. Now, so, people have met him before. He's been on some of the videos before. We came out to do some kitchen layouts, and he saw the laser programming part they did with the lasers and stuff. Yep. So he brings all that all back here and he sticks it in the computer right here. And this is where it all starts to come together. So, you know. so there's now how many people have the laser measuring I think system? One, I think there's well there's one of the shop in town that I know that uses it for most all their jobs. There's a third shop in town that has one that they're not really using it all that much yet. Um, but so most we, people are still doing the old cardboard or plastic template layout stuff. So. Yeah, there's some really different ways of doing it with either cardboard or thin strips of plywood that you glue together. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we started doing the laser templating um, about a year and a half ago. 
um, before we got the CNC machinery. So that was kind of the first step to, to going digital is, is to do the, do the laser uh, templating. And then prior to getting the digital machines, it printed out, we print the templates out on these vinyl, on that plotter, big plotter <laughs> printer. Print, it, print, print the templates out on these vinyl sheeting, and then we lay that, lay those out on the slab and trace around them. That's so that would like make our pattern. Uh, now that we have the CNC machines out there, we don't we can skip that step and um, and go feed feed it direct from the computers through the network to the. Uh, can I show so again, what it looks cut, like? yeah, cutting down on the yeah. process, you know. So this is this is shot with the laser, um, and then the. We'll add the overhangs, the profile edges, uh, then we'll take it here. This one has a seam in it with that line here, so then we can split those pieces apart. Um, so we have our seam line there and um, get them doctored up to send them over there to the this computer. So this computer here is where we program the machines that you just saw out in the shop. Um, we'll place each piece down here, tell the computer what tool line to run on it. Uh, then we can run a simulation. You can see here this is um, simulation of the table oh, neat. and so here it can show us it'll show us which tools going down each line um, as it goes through if we have any issues with the pods that we use underneath of the tools running into them or anything uh, this is just kind of a quality control check before it actually goes into production to make sure that we're we're happy and there aren't going to be any major mistakes so awesome if, 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 it, if he for example, if you didn't have one of those pods, those red things on the bottom, if you didn't have one of those placed in the correct spot, if they were too close to the edge, that simulation would show the tools running into the pod. Mm. And then, then we would back up and get it fixed. So that way we're finding, if there is a mistake, we're finding it on the computer instead of finding it on the it slab. On the slab. <laughs> so yeah, less waste that way because you're yeah, not messing up a whole yeah. slab. Yeah. So safe, yep. Uh, so what is what's let's talk about products here. So I see a bunch of stands. So which one do you want to start with? Yeah. Let's start with well. Razor, so I these guess. are uh, <laughs> we uh, there's you know several different brands of quartz that are in the marketplace. I the, what I have display stands up here are most of them that are like most readily available in this market. The ones that we can get from the uh, the, the suppliers that service the Western Slope best and so the um, MSI Q quartz is what we do a lot of these these ones that have the yellow sticker on it that say stock these are ones that I buy full bundles of and keep it in stock and so having inventory of it allow these colors I can give a better price on when we have I'll pull it out there so you can kind of see some of them and uh, we try to stock some of the more affordable colors and um, and I can give a better price when we use stock material versus non-stocked. But any of the colors that are on any of these stands, I can order them in. Even other stands that I don't have up, I can get. But this one on this side is LG Via Terra. Um, LG, the same company that makes electronics and appliances and all that. They have a quartz line. Um, <laughs> Via Terra. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. I know I had a customer come in here one time and she priced some quartz and it was, I think she got the Cadillac of the quartz. So which brand was that? That probably was the Cambria over here on this side. I think it was right, yeah. Cambria, yes. Cambria is, tends to be the highest price quartz there is. Doesn't mean it's necessarily better than the others, but it is higher prices. It, it is a U.S. company. The slabs are all manufactured in the, their factory up in mm -hmm. Minnesota. They're pretty. And there's and a lot more colors they have available than what I have on these stands. They're, they're not complete. And compared to quartz, they're kind of in the same price ranges. Or not, I mean, granite, I mean, sorry. They're in the same price range. So you I mean, it tends to be, it's, on average, it's more than, than the average granite. Cam, a lot of the, just in real general terms, the average price of quartz is a little bit higher than the average price of granite. Anything that I have in stock, both quartz and granite, they're, they're all kind of in the same price groupings. My group one quartz is the same price as my group one granite. Um, and but Yeah, I, I kind of want people to know that because you don't realize that because you think quartz is not real stone. It's a manufactured product. It should be cheaper. 
but it's not. You can get just as high in the courts as you can in the grants, or higher, you know? Yeah. So I want people to realize that, because I don't think people are realize that, so. Yeah. So tell us the differences between all the stones that you can get. Um, the, 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 I mean, the two uh, major categories of stone that we do, you know, almost all of is either granite, which is natural stone, um, and then the, the quartz, it, what, it, which is the manufactured slabs. They call it quartz because it's 93% natural quartz granules that are in there, so they want to try to make it look like they're a natural stone. Um, but it is, they are manufactured slabs. Um, so and then other types of natural stone that's not done near as frequently as granite, there's, there's marble, there's quartzite, um, not to be confused with quartz, which are man-made slabs. Quartzite is a, is a natural stone. Um, and there's limestone, a few others, but the vast majority of all the stone that's done, you know, in kitchens and stuff is the granite. Uh, marble is um, not, I, not, not recommended for kitchens because it's a relatively softer stone and more porous, stains easier, higher maintenance. Um, used more frequently for bathroom vanities and maybe fireplace surrounds and stuff like that. Um, I, um, yeah, but the, the, out of all the different types of natural stone there is, you know, 95% of or more uh, that we do is granite. Okay. Um, yeah. So if you're doing a kitchen and you're worried about heat and scratching, you would mm -hmm. want... It, it, granite is more heat resistant okay. and it, um, scratching they're both pretty hard you're not going to scratch them with a you know with a knife or sliding your pans across them um, we still recommend cutting on them because it's really bad on your knife blades. <laughs> <laughs> so it's worse on your knife than it is on yeah. the countertop uh, with heat um, you know with the granite it is more heat resistant than quartz it, it, you're probably not going to have a problem with putting hot pans on granite um, with quartz it is you can have if you're it, it is not i guess it um yeah it, it, it can get like a you know hairline fracture or something from too much heat it's usually like long sustained heat like if you have an electric griddle that you always use in the same spot or, or some kind of electric appliance that you have right on top of the um of the vent that, that food, uh, produces a lot of heat so put a trivet or something underneath it or put it on a cutting board but oh, that's good okay yeah and how easy is it to keep them clean and polished and yeah it, it's it's easy i mean there's there's with quartz and granite they're both harder than any of your pots and pans and dishes and stuff that you normally use in a kitchen so you're not going to scratch them either one of them with your you know normal kitchen use um so they're they're both you know and, and polishing same thing or yeah you don't ever you don't have to repolish them or anything like okay. that um, there are some that have to be sealed right? yeah granite natural stone does need to be sealed we always and quartz does not need to be sealed quartz is non-porous so it doesn't need to be sealed granite or any natural stone is porous you can't see the pores we're talking about you know at a microscopic level those pore spaces but when liquids if liquids sit on it for a while it seeps into those pore spaces that can leave a stain like oily like dark liquids and acid you know like grape juice wine um, you know oily liquids or any kind of dark liquids they sit there for a while they can seep into those pore spaces and, and darken it so the sealer kind of protects it from that um, and and it, but so in, in this we always give it the initial application of sealant for every you know every granite that we do here in the shop and then it needs to be the homeowner needs to reseal it every every couple of years and it's very simple to do you buy it off the shelf at you know any home store and follow the instructions on the bottle and it, it's real simple to do it's just one of those things you need to try to remember to do or put it on your calendar to do it every other year or something and um, good to know yeah. yeah okay so let's talk about pricing so you have I think is there five groups for my minutes? yeah for my for my in stock material most everything I have is is just in four pricing groups. We just call them group one, two, three, four. I think I have one color that's a group five color that's a quartzite. And so, um, yeah, just put them in those pricing groups because it's easier to explain to people uh, when they come in and want to know pricing and stuff. So, uh, but my price groupings 
for my in-stock material does not correspond to price groupings from, like if you were to go to example, Granite Imports, the main slab supply yard here in Grand Junction, you go over there and they'll tell you this one's group one, this one's group two, so forth. Their price groupings do not correspond with mine. Just It's just a, a way of kind of giving a relative price scale. So Well, okay. your group pricing too is the pretty much all in finished product in, in the end pretty much, right? It, it includes the, the square foot price that they that I would quote you or put on a bid is it is the installed price. It's the okay. all-inclusive job complete price that includes material, all the labor side of things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that and that starts at what's what's the so at price? around at around fifty five dollars per square foot installed and everything of the Which in the group one price. Really isn't that bad, really. Yeah. With, an there, average kitchen is two foot by let's say a ten foot run. That's 20 square feet times $55. Now I'm going to have to do some math. That was a mistake. <laughs> Give myself a So like uh, 1200 bucks about? Well, for, yeah, but I mean, so, most But that's your starting price. And yeah. Then, and then you got options, though, because you have, let's step back over here, because I know you have the options over here. Because <laughs> we you have the starting price, you have this right here is your edging. The bull right nose. So these, on, this, this, is some this sample them. piece here is um, the five different edges that are included in, you know, the base price. The, these are the edges that our CNC machine out there um, can produce, and so all five of them are the same price. There's the OG, this Debbie Bullnose, uh, the half, half Bullnose, half Bullnose. Let me turn square, around here. The square, square edge, edge, which is this one right here. Right. And then a little bit of a, I'm gonna turn so you can see the side, a little okay. bit of a crescent shot. Yeah, so yeah. that's your basic price. I don't know if you saw ones. the crescent. Let me pull it back out there so you can kind of see it. Okay, there you go. Uh, I'm trying to hold it where you can see it a little bit at the angle. Yeah, a little yeah. Bit on the side. Sort of okay. a, yeah, moon or whatever, a arc, a yeah. shallow, shallow arc. So here, I'll um, just show you the displays here. Like, this is quartz, so they, they, they're getting really good with quartz on making it look like marble. Um, it really it, does. This is a, uh -huh. called Calicutta Laza in uh, the Q Quartz Calicutta Laza. A lot of the different brands of quartz make, you know, make a, make colors that, that look like this as well. Um, and that kind of the, the white quartz and the marbly looking quartz is like the, the best selling colors and, and style right now in quartz. Someone loves this piece. <laughs> right. Yes. We, do, we do a lot. We do, I stock this color that we do a lot of this particular color, Calcutta Laza. Now, um, I want to just, this is not the thickness of the piece right here. Right. Right. This is actually, he put a lip on this edge to make it look like it's super thick. Right. Because really it's only Really, it's only this thick. Well, it's, it's give thick. or take. No, it's this thickness here. So okay, it's that go. thickness. There you go. Three centimeters thick, roughly an inch and three sixteenths thick. So that's the product um, that comes yeah. in. But and you then, can make it look thicker for right. them. Yeah. This is a, this okay. set, this is a, what's called a mitered apron. This is a cut of miter, a miter cut on both the top piece and the edge piece, and glue them together, makes it look. Makes and, it look thicker. and the line's lined up so it looks like it carries right through, like it's the same vein all the way yeah. through, which is awesome looking. Yeah, I like the th I like that thick looking piece. It's awesome looking. So, yeah. And then this is another piece that you guys made. This, right? yeah, this this, this one over here is a this is a type of stone called quartzite. It's a natural stone. This color is called um, Cygnus, and it has a bright. You can't see it in the video, but this has a brushed finish the little little a very slight textured finish you can um, feel it yeah uh -huh. yeah it's like like a little bit like, like it feels like this has got grain in it and it feels like it has grain in it you can see it and it feels like it this know? this particular color is also available in regular polished um polished as well but i, I think this color looks better in with the brushed finish and kind the sinks look so mint. good when they're built in yeah oh i like that. this style here this is something that darren first showed me and that's where you put the undermount sink but you bring the countertop further over so it lips over 
So I'd should... ignore that the sink didn't get clean before the video was shot. <laughs> we don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great that when it's like that, and when you wipe, everything falls actually yeah, in the sink. Nice. Yeah, it's nice. So the general term mm -hmm. for this type of doing this type of sink mount is called undermount sink. The majority of all granite and quartz is, is done with an undermount sink. It costs a little bit more to do it that way, but most people are willing to pay the extra price to not have a, a lip on the top mm -hmm. of your counter. We have a lip on top of our counter. And I hate it. And we hate it. Yeah, we hate it. <laughs> we're actually, one of these days, we're going to get some granite in there. We're going to call Darren. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The problem was that we're going to have to have a seam in our countertop because we built an island that's... Huge. Ha what's the longest length that you can do for an island? You've told me this one Yeah, before. well, the, the, most slabs are somewhere between 10 to 11 feet long, so we're constrained by the size of the slab. We're also constrained about by how whether or not we can get it in the house in one piece. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a piece even though it's within the dimensions of the slab, we still have to do it in two pieces with a seam because of stairs or get, you know, getting it in, getting it through tight spaces in a house and so forth, or ceiling clearance can sometimes be a, an issue. So, um, but most slabs are, uh, are they run between um, 10 to 11 feet long and about six feet wide. Quart slabs closer to five feet wide. Granite slabs closer to six feet wide. Because we did one island one time, and <coughs> nine, it, nine, um, it was it was better hope all the ends come in without breaks on them because they pul basically polished <laughs> off the edges and that was it. <laughs> um, eight, probably eighty percent the kitchens that we do require at least one seam, but um, smaller kitchens we can use and get all the pieces without a seam. But most always there's there's at least one seam that has to be put into a. Um, a countertop somewhere. That's we're gonna, we're That's, gonna need a scene. We're gonna have a scene. <laughs> <laughs> we got a super long island. We're gonna have a scene. But well, tell them your phone number and how they can get a hold of you. Yeah, sure. And where you're located at? Yeah. So the address here is um, 2502 West Pinion Avenue in Grand Junction. It's um, it's uh, runs between Pinion runs between 25 Road and 25 and a half Road. It's like the first street that's back behind Sam's Club. Um, and my phone number, you can call me direct on my cell or shoot me a text, and that's um, just my name, Darren Hinton, D-A-R-I-N, okay, I'm giving you my email address. <laughs> my, my, <laughs> let's start there. My email address, you, uh, you can email drawings to me or, or shoot over a question, any questions. So that's just my name, Darren Hinton, D-A-R-I-N-H-I-N-T-O-N, at gmail.com. And then my cell phone number is 970-210-6436. Okay. So they can call you with any questions they yeah, have? Or? Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 Yeah. And if you have me coming out looking at a kitchen and you're wanting granite top, countertops, I'm going to send you down here to look at his his supply anyway. So, uh, <laughs> I stock it. We, uh, I don't know if we want to go outside and kind of get a broad shot of all the slabs, but I, I stock a but usually I have between 30 to 40 colors of uh, different colors of granite that I stock and then 10 or so different colors of um, quartz that I keep in stock. It looks like they're unloaded so it's probably safe to go out there. We probably should, could run by there really quick if you want. Yeah. Up, just, just do a walk down the aisle here. Then they can have an idea. Yeah. Hi Roscoe. <laughs> Pretty busy yard today. Sorry if I'm bouncing. The sun's went away again. Walking. What? <laughs> Said sorry if I'm bouncing. So yeah, just along the front fence line here, just all each A-frame hat. Each A-frame has a different color on it, and certain That's colors great. I sell a lot of, so I try to keep keep them stocked up. What's colors. your best seller? The color. Oh, let's see. <laughs> right now, probably my best seller is. Um, Two of them, one called Colonial White, one called Silver Cloud. Okay. 
Okay. I'll white, show you these. White, white gray cones are what seem to be the best, most popular. Yeah, yeah here's one right Actually. here. So this is colonial white. Okay. That's been a real good selling color for a few years. It's cool. It has like a purple too. Yeah, so those are garnets. It does a little bit right in there, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty. And then um, down here, got two different bundles of the silver cloud. Um, this oh, one here, great. and this is one. This is a Group One color, so that's been real popular lately because it has an exotic. It looks more expensive yeah. than it is. It has kind of an exotic look with all that motion in the veining, but it's in the Group One price grouping. Where do a lot and of these grants come from? Here in the U.S. Or? I buy them from brokers that import them from um, most Brazil and India is where most of the granite that ends up in the states here was quarried in Brazil and India. So here's I didn't know one. that. Silver cloud. That's pretty. Um, in fact, this is one that, that um, comes from India. That's pretty. And this, this, is, this one here is quartzite. This is the most expensive slabs I have here right now. So this one's the only color I have in my group five price. This is a quartzite called Calicutta Taupe. And um, yeah, That's the neat. quartzite look. The quartzite looks similar to a lot of marble in terms of kind of the, the appearance of it, but it is a different type of stone. Quartzite is a very hard stone, even harder than than granite. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, mm -hmm. And here's some of the quartz that you have, right? Yeah, going down the row here, most all of this along the rest of the way is the quartz. This one. With the quartz. <laughs> Yeah, with the quartz, it has when it's outside, it has to be stored with the with the unfinished side facing out yeah. to keep it protected from the sun. So yeah, so there you can see what that one so looks like, like right, right there. Right there is actually this color. Yeah, and, uh, so it has like yeah. a tan color with a gray, kind of a sort tan, of. yeah, kind of a tan gray. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So here's the Calicutta Laza that I have in the in the uh, island in the showroom there. Again, these are the back sides of the slab, so not as shiny right. as the yeah. finished right sides. But you, there you can go. get an idea, though. That's right there. Yeah. That's pretty. That's the one up to the island. That's the pretty. I, I like that. Here's a yeah. here's a marble that um, <clears throat> that uh, the customer actually picked this slab out at at the main supply yard here in town. Granite Imports. They hand selected this slab. This will be used for some bathroom vanities. Um, here in a month or so. That's pretty. And this is a marble. Yeah. <clears throat> That's pretty. Yeah. Wow. So okay. you can you can you can pick out a granite and or or something else somewhere else and have you cut it as well. Yep. That's cool to know. Yeah. Well, there you go. So That's this whole rack, the rest of the way down, is just my stock of the most of the quartz colors. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. And then right. back over here to the the partial slabs and remnant slabs. Neat. Okay. All right, folks. So if you're looking, looking for granite or quartz, it's the man to come see right here and his yes. team. High okay. tech. Yeah, high <laughs> tech. I've been, in I've, I've been in the business for like 21 years now um, for, with my own shop, owning my own business uh, for, I guess, 13 years now that I've been working for myself. And so I've um, been doing a little while. Lots of knowledge here. And yes. his crew is great. I like his guys when they come out and they're installing. They're professional, professional clean. They clean up after themselves. They make everything look nice. So they're great guys. And I like them. So come check them out. And uh, as always, you can catch this page. We'll post it on to our blog, Facebook, YouTube, probably. Yeah. I don't know where else. Where else? Website. Website. There you go. Sorry. MightyManHandyMan.com. <laughs> yep. There you go. So check us out there. And thanks for checking us out. We'll talk yep. to y'all later. Remember, Darren right. Hinton, Quartz Works. Yep. Yeah. I'll see you yes. next. Bye. Take care of you.